It's October. October is spooky. I have spooky games. I am YouTuber. I do spooky game review. Razor Freestyle Scooter. No, that is funny joke. Resident Evil 2. I don't want it. Resident Evil 2, called Biohazard 2 in Japan and released January 21st, 1998, Resident Evil 2 is considered by many not only a great horror game, but also arguably one of the best games ever made, and I've never played it until now. Yep, I've never touched a Resident Evil game before, so I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. My childhood consisted of Super Mario 64, Body Harvest, and apparently my grandma thought that I was gay. So I've never experienced this. Let's turn off the lights and get into it. Actually, let's, let's keep the lights on. I'm not sure where to begin with this review. I usually start with the story, but I instead wanted to start with the first thing that grabbed my attention about Resident Evil 2. It's presentation. The first thing that the player is ready to when they boot up the game is this wonderful quick cutscene that shows us the player characters, and um, does this look really good? Like, for N64 standards, doesn't this look really good? I know it's just a cutscene, but wow. And then, when you start up a new game, you're given another lengthy cutscene, and it looks fantastic. These are so dang pretty. Best cutscenes on the console by far. Just look at this. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 Grandma and Grandpa, I'm playing a scary game, and I don't think I could sleep alone tonight. I was wondering if I could sleep with you. You're 24. In the grand scheme of things, cutscenes don't really mean anything when it comes to actual gameplay, so let's discuss how the game looks when you're actually playing. I think it's also great. The backgrounds in this game are pre-rendered still images, and they're very detailed. It's the most detail I've seen on the system. The character models, while not perfect by any means, especially during the cutscenes that aren't FMV, are still pretty good. They're much better than the character models in other games that did human characters. The enemies are all super detailed when necessary, and each and every background is unique. It just looks so good. It may be too early to say this, because I haven't played all the N64 games yet, but I think this is the best looking game on the console. It looks great almost all the way through. The cutscenes are fantastic and the actual gameplay, while sometimes very N64-ish, still looks great. Resident Evil 2 is number one when it comes to graphics on the N64, followed by Gitter Love and probably Banjo-Kazooie or DK64. I'm still thinking about it. Oh, and uh, Dobutsu no Mori. That's enough about its visuals though. I was just blown away and I wanted to talk about it right away. I want to talk about Resident Evil 2's story and its storytelling. Without spoiling the game, the story goes like this. This is Leon. He's a new police officer sent to work in a place called Raccoon City. This is Claire. She's a college student who comes to Raccoon City in search of her brother, Chris. But plot twist, Raccoon City has been taken over by a virus which has turned most of the population into zombies. Quite the sitcom setup if you ask me. When both of them arrive in Raccoon City, they are surprised to find out, hey, Hey, there's a bunch of dead dudes walking around. They meet up with one another, but in the end get split up, so they decide to go their separate ways, both going to the police station. Here, they are able to meet again, but decide that they should look for other survivors. So, they split up again. That's not safe! That's how people die! Haven't you ever seen any horror movie ever? Claire meets a girl named Sherry who is running away from a monster, and Leon finds Ada who is looking for her boyfriend. And this is where our story begins. Did I steal that from someone? About to enter spoiler territory, so if you want to skip all that, you can go to this timestamp here. I plan to discuss storytelling elements around this mark, but I won't be spoiling the game. Alright, here we go. About to get into it. Here it is. Spoilers on their way. Okay. In Claire's story, which is the one that I played first, so I want to talk about it first, Claire and Sherry split off from Leon and go into the sewers. Here, we find out that it was Sherry's parents who made the virus that is making people all zombified, and whatever ified this is. And her father has actually implanted a virus inside of Sherry, which will create more offspring. Gross, bro. Her father was also infected by the virus a while back, so he's become this ugly thing. His madness because of this virus ends up driving him to attack and fatally wound his wife, who tells Claire of a cure for Sherry. With this information, Claire creates the cure and fights Sherry's father. Real quick, gonna move on to Leon's story. We'll get back to Claire in just a Bit. In Leon's story, he continuously has encounters with this thing called Mr. X. This is important for later. Leon teams up with Ada, who actually sees Sherry and ends up with a golden locket that Sherry drops. At one point, they meet Sherry's mother, who attempts to shoot Ada, but Leon takes the bullet like a boss. Ada then leaves Leon behind like a not very nice boss, and she has a little tussle with Sherry's mother. She finds out that the locket has a sample of the virus, and then she goes back to help out Leon. Took her a while. Later on, they're attacked and Ada gets injured, and look at that, she's all messed up now. Hashtag She's all messed up now. It's then revealed that she's been a spy who wanted to get the virus for a secret company. She and Leon... Is anyone else getting the sense that this story is more about Ada than Leon? Battle Mr. X and Ada seemingly dies, but not before confessing her love for Leon. <laughs> Get a room. Leon moves on and battles Mr. X again, this time with assistance from a mysterious figure who gives him a rocket launcher. You know, 
just casually hands over a rocket launcher. This is where the two main characters meet back up at a train to escape, and they're pursued by Sherry's father, who is really like not looking good anymore. They set the train to blow, and Sherry's father is then killed in the explosion. At the end of the game, Claire cures Sherry and claims that she's going to continue looking for her brother, and Leon decides that he's going to bring down Umbrella. The end. Not really confusing, but it's something that you have to actually play the game to truly understand. Play this game. So the story sort of doesn't end, but instead leads into another game, which is always something that bothers me. That said, I do think that the story that we got was solid. It's pretty simple, short, and sweet, which I like. I just wish that these characters had a proper ending in this game. How is the story told? Through its cutscenes, mostly. You get these nice FMVs which set up the story, and then outside of these, there will be in-game cutscenes. This all drives the game forward, and I think it's solid storytelling. You can't really go wrong with cutscenes as long as they remain a reasonable amount of length. Also, these cutscenes don't steal gameplay from the player. Mostly, the cutscenes are just talking and no action with the exception of the end, and I love that. I want to do the actions, the cutscenes can do the talking. Also, the story is told in two parts, which I assume some of you could have figured out. You have Leon's story and Claire's story, and actually, depending on which story you play first will affect the other story. For example, I played as Claire first, and there was this moment where I had to pick between holding more items or a machine gun. I chose more storage space, so then when I played as Leon, I could grab the gun, but I didn't grab the gun because I couldn't figure out where to find it. I love how it does this, and to get the true ending of the game, you have to play the game like this. How is the backstory story and context told, through these diary entries and files and such. Instead of this game throwing all the context of the player at the beginning or even in the manual, it instead takes a sort of subtle approach. If the player wants to know the backstory and context, they have to search for these. Each one adds a bit more to the story and even gives some of the characters more character. It's perfect for giving context because the player has to put it all together themselves. I absolutely love it. In terms of building backstory and context, I think it's one of the best ways I've ever seen it done in a game. Alright, so the graphics are phenomenal and the storytelling is stupendous. That's a... Uh, that's a really good start. Now let's discuss the controls which I've read online people have had issues with. You move with a control stick or D-pad, interact with things with A, run with B, aim with R, shoot with Z once aiming, the C buttons are used for options in a map, and you press the start button for a status screen. Button mapping is solid. Freezax likes button mapping. But the movement in Resident Evil 2 is tank controls. Nightmare Creatures, Shadow Man, Resident Evil 2, all spooky games all have tank controls. Tank controls are the official sponsor of spooky games. Makes sense. It's the scariest form of controls after all. Personally, I dislike tank controls. I specifically dislike them in games like Nightmare Creatures and Shadow Man because they just kind of made playing the game more difficult than it had to be. But I got used to them and was able to make it all work. Resident Evil 2 is designed around using tank controls, so in reality, it works almost from the get-go. I still don't love tank controls, but since the camera angles in this game are constantly changing, having tank controls is beneficial because it never impedes movement. There are times when it makes running from enemies challenging, but it's not the worst. Some of the camera angles suck though, and they hide enemies, which is all a part of that scary fact factor I'd argue. I hate to say this, but I think the tank controls were actually necessary for this game, and in the end, beneficial to the design. I think I really like this game. So what is this game? Resident Evil 2 is sort of a puzzle game with action elements. You can play as either Leon or Claire, like I mentioned before, and both characters have different weapons and tools that they use. For example, Leon always has a lighter and can use the shotgun. Claire can pick locks and use whatever gun this is. The game consists of a lot of puzzle solving. You have to find a tool of sort and use it in another area of the game to get another tool that you can use somewhere else. If you break it down and think about it way too much, this game is a giant fetch quest. Not a bad thing. That said, one of my biggest gripes with Resident Evil 2 is that in the two different stories, they repeat a lot of the same puzzles. Figuring out the game the first time was fun. Doing it all over again in the second story is just kind of lazy. It didn't bother me a lot, but it's my biggest issue with the game overall. The game's design is pretty linear, so finding items that are necessary and then using the items never really is a challenge. Like I mentioned before, the game is pretty detailed graphically, so when something needs to be checked, it's easy to determine. Sometimes it can be troublesome to find something useful in the room, so I press A on pretty much everything there. Disturbing stuff. Okay. The challenge, in reality, is surviving. This game isn't necessarily difficult, and the difficulty comes in how you come across enemies. When you find enemies, you got two options. Try to work with the controls to run and escape them, there's a benefit to this, or you could fight them, there's also a benefit to this. Ammo and weapons in the game are limited, so you need to conserve as much as possible. Avoiding putting bullets in weaker enemies is the best way to conserve ammo, but sometimes you can't help but fight the enemies. They're either just in your way, or it'll be beneficial to strike them down, because you'll be going through that particular area a lot. I found where there were a lot of enemies, I tried to take them down 
down, and where enemies were far and few, I just tried to run around them. Figuring out if it was worth fighting or not was one of the elements of the game that made it scary. A lot of times you have to make that decision right away, and sometimes you'll regret it. Places where you absolutely have to fight are, of course, the bosses. The bosses in this game range from okay to creative to pretty good to yep, I'm gonna have that in my nightmares for a couple of weeks. Offspring is really easy and doesn't even feel like a boss, but it does introduce a harder enemy to the game, so in that sense, it works. Maybe. The alligator, while the easiest boss, is kind of cool. You have to use something from your surroundings to beat it, but I find what's most interesting about this fight is how it made me feel. You're stuck in this narrow pathway and you're locked in, so it's either figure out what you have to do within a few seconds or die. I hated that kind of pressure in the moment. William Birkin, in all of his forms, pretty much boils down to run far and shoot him. The final confrontation with him in the A scenario really freaked me out. While he's in his second form here, he can jump around and climb up walls, so I had to try my best to find the perfect position to shoot him. It was nerve wracking. And then his final form is very easy because it only it takes a few shots, but it takes place after a pretty challenging area in the game, so there's a lot of pressure here. I thought I was gonna die and have to restart the area. And then finally, there's Mr. X. Mr. X is a constantly recurring boss, and I hate <laughs> This dude will sometimes just come out of nowhere. It really <laughs> He's only in the B scenario from what I understand, but knowing that he could show up at any point was terrifying. Yeah, Fox News. Most of the bosses it really boils down to getting your distance and then shooting them. In many ways, it's fighting the tank controls. I don't hate any of the bosses though. Pretty much every single one of them had me on the edge of my seat. I really didn't want to die. I hated going through the same scares over and over again. I'm really bad at games, guys. And one thing I wanted to talk about is how this game handled having a partner character. You start by yourself, then you move on to having a second character follow you. At first, when they follow you, there are no enemies around around, so you can get used to how fast you can move with the partner character, and then the game introduces enemies, so you have to balance both protecting and fighting. I really liked how they smoothly added that in, although Ada actually helps Leon fight sometimes, and that was super convenient. Sometimes you get to play as the partner character, and they're very vulnerable to attacks. These segments were mostly used for puzzle purposes. I was always a little tense while playing these areas with Sherry, because having no means of defense meant that I could die faster. I don't want to see Sherry die, and now I want to move on to one of the most important aspects of the game. Is it spooky? This game is designed to scare the player, and one way that it's designed like this is through its use of audio. Its music is really good, but it's good because it sets the horror tone fantastically. There aren't any standout tracks necessarily, and that's kind of how I prefer my horror games. There's a lot of piano in these tracks, and it's generally pretty slow, so it's haunting. In particular, for quality tracks, I want to point out the end credits theme. It's so good, it's nice and slow, and seems to convey a feeling of peace. You're done with your journey, but don't get too comfortable. There are a lot more of these games. I think that the music near the end of the game, when the place is about to blow, is pretty good. It's a huge contrast to a lot of the other tracks, which are very subtle. This one is all in your face. You gotta run. And the music that plays when Mr. X shows up terrifies me. That's no the use of silence is wonderful in this game. Oftentimes, the music just subtly stops, and the only thing the player will hear is the footsteps. When it got quiet, I'd start to eat cushion. It felt like something was coming, and sometimes I wouldn't want to move forward. It plays with your fears, and while I hate feeling that way, I love that this game does it. A specific area where it did this was here. The game just got quiet, and while I should have expected what was coming, I didn't. Whenever it gets quiet, it's fair to assume that something like this is going to happen. However, it doesn't do it every time. It manipulates your emotions and pulls you into false sense of security through silence. Resident Evil 2 also has its fair share of voice acting, and I think it's good. Another complaint that I saw about the game was about its voice acting, and I honestly have very few complaints. The voices of the characters were given work, and I think they added enough motion to them when necessary. The biggest problem with the voice acting is how the conversations are paced, because sometimes a character would end a sentence and the response that they would get would take way too long. It just sounded awkward at times, but it was something that I barely noticed. The dialogue yeah. at times can also just be a bit... Weird. I don't think I've introduced myself yet. My name's Leon. I'm with the RPD. But none of it's as bad as a certain other game. There are little bonuses to get in Resident Evil 2. You can get alternate costumes for the playable characters, and even play as a character named Hunk. I like these kind of bonuses. The alternate costumes are solid for what they are, and since the gameplay in Resident Evil 2 is good, then having to play yet again another story with Hunk is fun. It only adds onto the game in a positive way. But I'm really bad at it. Resident Evil 2 is genuinely terrifying. Like, it's consistently terrifying. The presentation, graphics, and audio combined with nerve-wracking design makes for the scariest experience you can have on the N64. So, I think I've found it. I've found the scariest game on the console. I've been looking for four years, but I think I finally did it. Unless the original Castlevania, Doom, or Shadowgate 64 have anything to say, here it is, folks. And not just that, but this game is really good. Like, 
arguably one of the best N64 games. I think it belongs in the conversation at the very least. Everything about the game is good to great. Presentation, design, storytelling, unique bosses, and well-executed tank controls. You very rarely find a game this consistently good on the N64. I have problems with it, but my problems are so far and few. Usually when I read about games for the N64 that were 10 out of 10s, or 9 out of 10s, or even 8 out of 10s back in the day, I'm always a little bit apprehensive. In actuality, a lot of N64 games simply don't hold up today. I'm not saying that these games are by any means bad, but games like Ocarina of Time, Super Mario 64, GoldenEye, and even a recent example from my channel, Turok, don't seem to hold that same kind of luster that they once did. So going into Resident Evil 2, I was fully prepared to tear apart yet another beloved classic, but instead I found myself with one of the best games I've ever played. Resident Evil 2 is fantastic. Resident Evil 2 is N64 top notch. And there you have it. I've never really brought it up because I really want to take my time with it, but I'm currently working on a top mm -hmm, best N64 games video. And uh, I think this one might be in the top 10. I need more time to think about it though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on Resident Evil 2 if you've played it, and if you haven't played it, play it. And there was my video. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos of mine, I recently did a comparison video of Turok Dinosaur Hunter vs Turok 2 Seeds of Evil. I recommend it. Once again, thanks for watching. Until next time. Alright, we're gonna scream now. Dig dog god! Just a foot to Fox News! God why? I should put to I just no! The fuck fumble! The banjo to Okay, I'll call those good.